In this video, we'll talk about some rules that you can use to integrate some common functions. So just like derivatives, where we found that there were rules that you could use instead of having to go through the whole uh, tedious definition of a derivative process, there's some rules that you can use and apply in, um, in really common situations to integrate things. So for example, in this table, we've got probably the simplest set that we can think about, and they let us uh, integrate polynomials and functions like that. So the, for example, when we integrate uh, a constant, we get something like this, that constant times x plus c, a power, it's kind of like the reverse of, of differentiation, increase the power and divide by that, a constant times a function, you can pull the constant out the front, and the sum of a function, when you integrate that, it's the sum of the integrals of the individual functions. Now, um, of course, notice we've got the integration constants here, the plus c, meaning that any constant can go there and it's still the integral of that function and that doesn't appear in the last two and the only reason being that they still have an integral sign in them so imagine if that u of x was maybe k then the plus c would come in and the same thing would happen with these two functions as well the plus c comes in once you've done the integration so it is there uh, the only tricky little thing you should notice is that uh, n can't be equal to that should be minus one not one minus 1. So n equal to minus 1 there, that rule doesn't apply. It's got a separate rule that we'll see at the end of this video. So here's a few example functions that we can have a look at. You've seen these before, but uh, now we're going to be integrating them. So let's see how that works. First one we've got there, we want the, first of all, we want the indefinite integral uh, with respect to x. So we want the integral of pi, which is just a number, with respect to x. Don't forget your dx, the, uh, the differential there. Uh, pi is a constant, so we're going to get pi times the variable plus c, where c is our integration constant. Uh, in b, we've got the integral of x to the 4, again dx with respect to x. So remember the rule says if we have a power, we increase the power by 1 and divide by the new power, and then add c to the end. So we're going to have x to the 5, divide by 5, plus c. Now remember, you can always check these things by differentiating them again and see if you get back the integrand of the original question. So x to the 5 on 5 differentiated would be 5x to the 4 divided by 5. So the 5s cancel, leaving you with x to the 4, which we require. And c, of course, differentiates away to 0. So c, question c, sorry, f of x is 3x to the 5. So we want to integrate 3x to the 5 with respect to x. So we've got a constant this time multiplied by a power, so I'm going to leave the constant, integrate the power x to the 5 by increasing the power to 6 and dividing by 6 and then adding in our integration constant. And the last thing then is just to cancel our common factors there. So we've got x to the 6 on 2 plus c. Finally, part d of the question is actually just all of those functions added together. So it's the integral of pi plus x to the 4 plus 3x to the 5 dx. Now our integral of a sum says that we can split that into the sum of the individual integrals. So we get the integral of pi dx plus the integral of x to the 4 dx plus the integral of 3x to the 5 dx. And we already know the results for each of those from our problem up above. So we're going to have pi x plus c plus x to the 5 on 5, plus, well, let's call these different c's because they would be different c's, c1, c2, and x to the 6 on 2, plus another c, which I'll call c3. And actually what you could do is just call those all the one constant. We didn't really need to have all three of those written out separately. I could have just used one, just call it the, the sum of the three things. So pi x plus x to the 5 on 5, plus x to the 6 on 6, plus c. And if you really, really want to, you can note that c is c1 plus c2 plus c3. But you don't really need to. It's just the integration constant for this original integral. So that's integrating polynomials. Uh, it's basically, it's just the reverse of differentiating them. And of course, as I mentioned with part b, you can check those things, that you've got your integrals right, by differentiating and checking that you get the integrand back again. 
All right, so a little bit of an applied question here. Uh, it says we've got an electronic circuit producing a periodic oscillating signal. And it does so in such a way that the frequency of the signal changes with respect to the inductance, and that can be written using this derivative. So here we're told what the derivative of something is. And then we're told a little bit more information. If F is 40 hertz when L is 0 uh, Henry's, uh, what is F as a function of L? So in other words, we are told what df dl is, and we need to find the function f itself. So in other words, we need to undo the derivative. And actually, this is what's called solving a differential equation, really, but um, it's actually just a really, really um, applied version of doing an integral. So if we know the derivative and we want to get back the function, we just need to integrate that right-hand side. So I can say that f of l is going to be equal to the integral of 40 on 2 plus l to the 3 on 2. Now it's with respect to l, where I'm going to note that f at 0 is 40. f when l is 0 is 40. So we're going to use that. That's going to let us get rid of the integration constant. So I've rewritten that on this slide um, in the negative index notation. Now why have I done that? Um, I just think it's easier to see things when I don't write them as fractions. So I've rewritten it with a negative index there. Now what I've actually got to do to integrate this is first of all realize that I haven't given us a rule yet to do that. But I do know that the function inside there, its integral needs to be the thing that when I differentiate it, I get this back again. So if you remember back to differentiation, when we have square roots, or things to the power of half, they differentiate to the minus half. And if you have 1 over a square root, so 1 over the square root of x, for example, that's 1 over x to the half, or 1 over x, sorry, just x to the minus a half, when you differentiate x to the minus a half, you get minus a half x to the minus 3 on 2. So to get a 3 on 2 minus power from a derivative, like we've got here, we need to have started with an x to the minus a half. So up here I think I'm going to need some sort of function which looks like a 2 plus l to the minus 1 half. So what I'm going to do now is see what that looks like if I differentiate that. So let's just say I've got 2 plus l to the minus 1 half. What's the derivative of that with respect to l? Well, it's going to be equal to minus a half, 2 plus L to the minus 3 on 2, times the derivative inside, oh sorry, up here, which is 1, and that's pretty much all we get. This looks a lot like this one, except that our little constants there, minus a half, is not the same as 40. So let's just say, what about if I did this? I'm going to say, I actually want 40 there. So I'm going to multiply the original function up here by minus 80. Just a constant. It's not going to make any difference because down here I'm just going to go times minus 80. So I've got a constant multiplier. These two together multiply to give minus minus is plus. 80 on 2 is 40. So I get 40 times 2 plus L to the minus 3 on 2. So it looks like the function which differentiates to give our integrand up here is minus 80 times 2 plus L to the minus a half. So I can use that now as my result. So I've got minus 80 2 plus L to the minus 1 half plus C. So we need to remember our integration constant. So what I've done is I've kind of, it's kind of like a guess and check. I've guessed what I think the integral will be. It wasn't quite right because it was out by a constant multiple. I've changed the constant multiple up the top, try it again, and I get the right result. Because this here, the thing that I get when I differentiate my top function, is the integrand that we've got up here. So that's how I can get that result. Now the only thing left to do is to use that little extra piece of information, f at 0 is 40. So if f at 0 equals 40, we need this result to also equal 40 at the same time. So we need minus 80 times 2 plus 0 when L is 0 to the minus a half plus C. So we need to equate those things and we can figure out what C is. 
So C is going to be equal to taking all of this piece over to there. We'll have 40 plus 80. And it's 2 plus 0. And that's a square root on the bottom, so it's the square root of 2. So we can just write that as our result for C. So our F function is minus 80 from just up here, 2 plus L to the minus a half, plus our C value, which we now know exactly. It's 40 plus 80 on root 2. And then we've got our function. So that's our frequency F, uh, how it changes with inductance L. So F is a function of L by integrating using a sort of a guess and check method. Now, at the moment, it is just guess and check, but what I'm going to do in the next uh, couple of videos is show you some ways to do that more systematically, but we'll see that as we move on. For now, it's just a bit of an extension. Just to finish off this one, uh, these are some more rules that we can apply, and basically it's just how to, ex uh, how to differentiate, integrate, uh, exponential, 1 on x, and some trig functions. Now, exponential, its derivative is itself, its integral is itself too, but with a plus c. Um, 1 on x, remember we couldn't use the power rule when n was minus 1, and this is why, because it actually integrates to the natural log function, just like natural log differentiates to 1 on x. And then we've got some rules for sine and cos. Now, we'll use these a bit more as we move into the next couple of videos, but I'll leave them for now. So to finish up, we've now got a set of fairly easy to apply rules for integrating polynomials and also some rules for trig and exponential and the minus one power function. So what you can do now is check out um, specifically 5.1.1 and 4 of my text and any other text you're looking at, check out things on integrating polynomials and the, the start of integrating exponential and trig and one on x. And of course there's some exercises you can find uh, on the Blackboard site. That's it for this one.